Hey everyone, how you doing? I'm Steve Rowe and I'm a British photographer based in Seoul, South Korea. I'm a product photographer by day and a street photographer by night, I guess, but I've been taking photos for the past five or six years. Originally, I started off doing travel photography, but after seeing how the streets transform here on rainy nights, I switched to neon night photography and I've not gone back since. It's the colors, it's the lights, it's the reflections, all of it just looks so beautiful. And I mean this in a nice way, but if you do ever come out on vacation to South Korea, I hope it rains on your holiday. I know that sounds bad, but if it does, you're in for a visual treat and honestly I think you're very lucky but what we're going to do today is we're going to look at this photo here on the screen we're also going to do some uh, night photography tips how to make sure you can get some nice crisp images how you can retain information in your light sources we'll talk a bit uh, about that later and how you can get nice neon colors out of your night shots how you can make them vibrant and how you can really make them pop and stand out so let's get to it now the first thing you want to do with your night photography is to make sure that you are not shooting overexposed. You might think that you want the image to look as bright as possible so that you can see everything. However, that's going to give you a lot of trouble later on when you come into editing. The main problems that you'll be facing is losing information from your light sources. And what I mean by information is writing, images, colors, anything like that, that could all be lost. So here's an example. I've got this LED sign right here. Now, as you can see, I can, I've got all of the colors visible, the pictures are visible, writing. In the corners, it's a little bit overexposed. You're seeing it's starting to disappear. That's an example. But this might be retrievable because it's not completely lost. We'll find out a bit more later on. But it's okay. However, if, you, if this was all white, overexposed, I probably wouldn't be able to retrieve anything. It'd be impossible. Now, what you want to do instead is shoot underexposed, and by doing that, you're more likely to be able to retrieve images, figures, writing, anything. All that information will be retrievable from your shadowy and darker areas. It is much more likely. So that's something you will want to consider when doing night shoots. Now I shoot with a Sony a7R4 which is a full frame camera, it's fully equipped for night photography and that means I've got the benefit of being able to push up the ISO quite high. This photo here was taken at 1600 ISO and that's a pretty reasonable number but the camera that I had before I used the Sony's I wouldn't push that beyond 800. If I did the photo would be like a complete grainy mess honestly. So what you really want to do is to understand your camera's capabilities and its limits before going out and doing night shoots. Now before I start doing an edit what I'll do is I'll check the photo for noise. If it's too noisy, I might discard it. But if there's a slight bit of noise, what I'll do is I'll add Luminar's noiseless plugin just here, which you can find under the tools section and then extensions. So I'm gonna show you an example here. I've already applied it. I'm gonna show you before and after. So you can see the effect. As you see, there's a bit of noise there. It's not too much that it, may, you know, that it ruins the photo. It's just a little bit. I apply this plugin and zooming out I'm still able to ret retain sharpness and the image still looks good. So that's the first thing that I do before starting an edit. Alright so jumping straight into the develop panel we don't need to change the exposure too much I think this photo is already uh, pretty well lit. The smart contrast is a really good slider I really do enjoy it. I'm going to add it a little bit here the other tool that you've got with Luminar is the Super Contrast, which is further down. It gives you more control over your contrast, highlights, mids, and shadows. I use that more towards the end as well, so uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And then highlights, we'll see if we can retrieve any information from this sign. Let's have a look. So I'm going to bring it down slightly. If I bring it down too much, I'm going to lose some of that pop from the light, so we'll see what it looks like. Just a touch here, minus 40. It's doing a good job, but I think I'm going to end up bringing the highlights back anyway. And to be honest, this information that I'm losing isn't that crucial to the image and the, this board overall. The main focus is the colors and the writing in the middle. And if you can see them, then I'm, I'm happy with that. So we'll leave that as it is for now. Shadows, I'm not going to touch. I'm gonna to do that down here in the curves. Let's have a look. Now typically which always looks good when it comes to photo editing is to use an S curve. That's where you make the letter S out of the, the, the tone curve here. That typically looks like this. 
but I'm going to not add it too much because I think this photo doesn't need a drastic edit if you know what I mean with the in terms of lighting already looked pretty good so I'm just gonna leave it there just subtle and I'm pretty happy with how that looks so let's move on to the color this is where we can find our temperature now when it comes to night photos we want to make sure that we are using cooler tones and cooler temperatures because if we've got a warmer temperature in our photo that would mean that maybe there's a sun somewhere and obviously it's night time so there's not so we're going to bring down the cooler temperatures now if you do want to have like a golden um, golden and warm aesthetic to your photo that's the style you want to go for go ahead you know it's all about experimenting isn't it at the end of the day and seeing what looks good by all means do that but we're going to bring down this slider here and, and, and bring in some cooler temperatures and I think that's looking pretty good already this image is I'm pretty happy with that and then we're going to touch the vibrance so just a little bit not too much though because further down we've got uh, right here we've got color harmony and we can really start to work with the colors there quite a lot and then I always add just like 10 sharpness I don't know why, I just always do it. it. Might not even have too much of a difference to be honest, but there you go. Enhance, now Enhance is such an awesome tool. It looks at your image, it sees where, what areas need bringing out, you know, in terms of lighting or which areas need uh, the highlights dimming down. The only issue is you can't really tell Enhance what kind of image you're going for. You know, if you're going for like a moody look, it, you can't tell it that. It's an AI, it's not that smart yet. Who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? Um, overall, it's just bringing the brightness out of, of the shadows, as you can see. But I actually don't want to do that. I want to keep these shadows nice and moody. Typically, with my photos, I always have quite a lot of darkness contrasting uh, with the brighter areas, and that ensures that the brighter areas pop. Whether that's something you want to experiment with your photos, but that's something that I always tend to do. I always have these really dark areas. I always want the prominent. And I always want the base of the viewer's eye to be straight for that light source or the subject. And then color, I come to that at the end. I always come to the color at the end because this is where I can, you know, do a bit of tweaking, uh, some fine tuning, so to speak. But what I really enjoy is the landscape tool. Now, landscape is the, the slider that I typically use is the golden hour one, and that would bring out sunsets. Or in, in landscape photos of a nice mountain at sunset but what I'm using it for here is to bring out some of the warmer lights that are in the photo if I use the warmer slider I'm going to get that warmth throughout my whole photo but this golden hour just does it on warmer light sources so it's a little bit of a hack in a way so I'm going to bring that out here as you can see look at the dramatic effect that we've already got from these light sources now, I could probably do this elsewhere within the color section but having it here in landscape it, it it covers all of those warmer tones all together it's definitely worth using and experimenting with same goes for foliage enhancer as well I guess but we've not got any greens in our in our photo really so I'm gonna bring that out already this photo is looking awesome and then vignette I do love me some vignette. Zoom out a bit so we can see the effect of that. What vignette does is it brings the viewer's eye straight into the center of the photo. You can see the difference here. So, there we go. So by having these dark areas around the corners of the photo, all of our attention is now straight into the middle. And what we've also got, which is particularly good with this photo, is that these light reflections are also coming straight down towards the center of the photo as well, which looks awesome. And we're, and our, basically our viewer's eye is being drawn straight in, straight through to the middle. So we've got all that. Relight is a really cool tool. Uh, it basically, you can just add like a vignette in a way, um, but to bright, Basically, we can do brightness near. I can bring that down and say I don't want the foreground to be that well lit. Again, to add further prominence, draw the eye straight down through the middle of the photo. Or I could light the uh, foreground up. I'm going to bring it down just a touch because we've already got quite a bit going on there with vignette. Um, and then I think that's all for now. Let's try this one. We're just experimenting here, it might not work. But atmosphere, now typically with cyberpunk and neon photos, we might want to add some sort of 
fog or mist because you typically see that with those with those types of photos and in, in cyberpunk movies and this tool here allows us to uh, evoke that feeling and if you add it here we do get a little bit going on at the back and that that does actually work in my opinion that looks pretty cool I'm gonna just add it a little bit We'll just add in the, just the fog one. You've got all types here, but we'll, we'll just go with fog. And then with depth here, I can tell the, I can say how much fog I want and in what part of the photo. I can bring it all the way through to the foreground, or I can just have it subtly coming in at the background. And it's all going on behind this pole here. And that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave that on. We'll see a before and after. You never know though, I might end up getting rid of it with this part just here, super contrast. So this is what I was referring to earlier. I've got control here over my highlights, my mids and my shadows. Have a look here, see what works. I don't really want to mess around with the highlights contrast. I'm very happy with the way they are now. Mids, yeah, let's bring out some of the light around here. You can see that coming through and then our shadows this is what might get rid of that layered fog just a touch I'm gonna bring that I'm gonna bring that up quite a bit so this is before and after as you can see with that added contrast now the before looked pretty flat and that's looking good to me and color harmony this is really for me what sets Luminar apart and this is what really helps with night photography edits and if you're really looking to make colorful cyberpunk neon photos this is the panel where you can make it all happen now already with this photo it's looking pretty good i've got some nice cool blue tones coming through the golds are starting to pop but we can make this look a bit more vibrant so I've got my warmth slider here, my temperature slider here. I don't need to mess with that. It's just the same as the one up here, but this is where we can make the photo a bit more interesting with color contrast. Now, the tones that I think I'm going to want to play with here are mainly the warmer tones and make create some color contrast around those. As you can see there, so they're looking a little bit flat. And we're just bringing out some of that vi vibrance and brightness, and that's looking pretty good. And then just down here again, this is something else that something else that looks pretty good. So we've got our split color warmth. So my warm tones, I can make them more green, or I can bring them all the way up to super burnt out, <laughs> super burnt out warmth. I'm pretty happy with the way they are. I might boost them up a little bit. And then with my cool tones, I'm not. I don't think that this photo needs to be any more blue. Similarly, I don't need to take any of the blue out. I think it's looking perfect as is. Color balance. Uh, I don't really touch shadows, to be honest. But my mids, I will experiment. Slide it each way, subtly each way. If you go too much, you'll be getting some really cooked photos there. Maybe around there is pretty good. That doesn't need much. We can bring out some of those yellows at the cost of cooler shadows. Mm, maybe just a touch. Right there. Let's see it before and after. Up until now. Awesome. It's looking really good. And then highlights. Maybe there. That doesn't need much. Um, yeah. I think that's looking awesome. Let's have a before and after. So it's interesting, when I was at this stage, I was thinking photos looking pretty much there, but then you get to this color harmony panel and you can just really elevate your, your edit to a whole new level. It really does give you a lot of control. And then as I said, I always come back to the color section at the end. This is where I fine tune the colors just a little bit. I have a look at the hue shift first. Sometimes I like to see if we can get more of a teal tone, not too much. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And then my yellows from doing that, I just want to show you there, my warm tones have gone more orange from doing that. So I'm going to bring them back over to yellow. 
Yeah. And then got these lights in the row just here. Can I bring these out? You'll have to forgive my computer. It does not enjoy screen recording and editing at the same time. Just a bit, but if we do this just here, we can really bring out the luminance from those warmer tones. That looks cool. And then, do we need that in the blues? Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see this is just making this whole area pop a little bit more. We really want the viewer's eye to travel all the way through to the photo, all the way through the photo, sorry. So that's looking good. Saturation, I think, I don't think we really need more of that. Well, let's just add a bit to the others. All right. So I think that's done. Yeah, I think it's looking good. I'm going to show you a before and after. I'll use this slider. So the before and the after. It's a dramatic effect. Use the preview option as well. Sorry, turn that off. Preview option as well. That's looking awesome. What's particularly good about this photo is we've got that split color tone. You often see this a lot in cinema as well when it comes to color grading. The director will often choose to have a scene where there's only two prominent colors. And we've got that with this photo. We've got our blue tones and our yellow tones. We've got the reds up here, they're similar to the yellows. They're still looking pretty good. Um, and overall, I'm very happy with that photo, with that edit. We didn't lose too much information from this board over here at the back. Like I said, I didn't want, to, didn't want to lose my highlights too much because I was going to then perhaps make the photo look a little bit dull. But it's looking good as it is now. And I think that's the end. All right, there we go. So that is a cyberpunk neon edit for your night photography. When it comes to night photography, it is going to be trial and error to begin with. A lot of experimenting to see what you're capable of doing with your camera and the sort of colors that you can bring out when it comes to post. But the main thing that you need to do is to just have fun. Go out there, take some photos at night and see what you can make with Luminar and especially make use of the color panel, uh, the color harmony panel in the professional section because that is where you can really transform your photos. But I think that's it from me. If you want to find more of my work, check out my Instagram, it's at the bottom of the page, uh, my website, portfolio, all of that, check it out. And if you've ever got any questions when it comes to night photography or you need any tips and tricks, shoot me over a DM, always happy to help out. All right, so that's all from me. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.